Growing up in Canada, you can guess what I probably wanted to be when I grew up. That's right, a hockey player. Just like every other kid born from the ice because it's our birthright. But it was different for me. It was my true purpose. It was my passion. It was what I was truly meant to do. And so for as long as I could remember, every person that I looked up to was a hockey player. Everybody that I wanted to talk to, everybody that I watched on TV, everybody that I listened to was a hockey player. Between 5 and 13 years old, that's all that I did. And as I started to listen to them talk, as I started to see them, I started to understand they had an it factor. They had something about them. Somebody who is that successful, somebody who had done it, somebody who had made it, had an it factor about them. And I became just enthralled and obsessed about figuring out what that it factor was. And by doing that, ultimately what ended up happening was as my peers continued to dive into the stats of their favorite players, I dove into glycemic index. As my peers started to play video games and look at comic books, I was reading exercise physiology books because I knew that that it factor had done something more. Consistency is ultimately what gets you paid. Talent will get you noticed, but consistency will get you paid. And I needed to figure out how to be consistent. And it was in December of 2000. I was reading through a book and I found HRV. I found this metric, this metric that they talked about that truly showed that the best athletes in the world had HRVs of 80. And so shortly after that, I went to the University of Alberta. I got some studies done, I got some tests done, as a 13-year-old kid, mind you. And I found that my HRV was 40. And so knowing that, I was like, okay, the best athletes in the world have 80, I have 40, I have some work to do. So I started to train more, I started to lift more, I started to skate more, I started to run more, I started to uh, take cold showers, I started to sleep in cold rooms, I started to intermittent fast, I started to uh, try meditation, I tried to do all the things the gurus were telling me, but yet I continued to see my HRV number drop. I continued to see that number go in the opposite direction that it really should have, and I saw it drop so much over the course of two years that it got to single digits, and it dropped so far that it dropped me right into the hospital. My liver was failing, I was depressed, I was suicidal, I was one step away from having a feeding tube. And as I was leaving a doctor's appointment, and I had this HRV metric continually going through my head, it hit me. HRV was a direct correlation to energy. And energy was the it factor. What every successful person had was sustained energy. They managed energy. And it came down to heart rate variability. It came down to that what heart rate variability was, was the time intervals between heartbeats. And when we started to understand that the more variant, the more variable those time intervals were between heartbeats, the greater our body was handling stress. And when I was able to make that correlation, that stress and energy were ultimately measured by heart rate variability, it changed everything. Because all of a sudden we were able to measure it. From there, I went and sought the professionals. I got a neurologist, a nutritionist, a strength coach, a, uh, as, went and saw as many doctors as I could that could talk knowledgeably about HRV. I continued to read more. And the people that I was working with even started to, but I started to educate them on this in their expertise. And all of a sudden my heart rate, or my HRV started to rise. My energy started to rise. My performance rose. My resiliency rose. And thus, that rhythm that I started to seek, that rhythm of overreaching, that rhythm of finding what my HRV was, started to guide my entire hockey career. And then it started to gift my whole educational platform, right through to my postgraduate work that I continued to dive into this, continued to learn more, continued to be fostered in this. And lastly, over the last 15 years, blessed me with a career working with some of the best athletes in the world, working in the best hockey league in the world, and ultimately having the opportunity to work with some of the most dynamic, most powerful leadership and executive teams in the world. 
And not only that, but I was able to apply it to myself. And I was able to get my HRV up into the hundreds regularly. If you see here, my average coming through sits around 95. And that's not because I'm better than anybody else. You've seen it. You've seen that I was on the bottom. I was at the very low. I've been at the low points. But rather that I realized that the crucial error I had made was that I had failed to measure. And when you fail to measure, you fail to manage. The most important things to us in the world, the things that we prioritize, we measure. You have money in the stock market, you measure it. You have a business, you measure it through EBITDA. You have diabetes, you measure it through glucose. You have high cholesterol, you measure it through LDL, HDL, total. You have a home, it has a real estate cost. But because I failed to manage, because I failed to measure and ultimately failed to manage, it almost cost me my life in pursuit of a dream. And it's not that you're alone. Neither of us are alone. None of you are alone. You do not have to feel this way. There was a study that came out and Forbes published it a couple months ago. And they measured and took a look of a survey of 2,100 executive teams through 1,700 different organizations and 24 industries worldwide. And they found a staggering number that 60% were suffering from burnout, otherwise known as low energy. 20%, okay, this is a staggering stat, 20% felt effective at leading. That means 80% did not feel they were effectively leading their teams because of the lack of energy that they felt. Their dreams were passing them by because they did not have the energy and they were not measuring and they were not managing. We go back a generation and we take a look at our student population. The National College Health Association in 2019 came out with a study that found that 80% of college students have suffered from burnout and that 40% of them are being treated for depression. It sounds like that 13-year-old kid that was striving toward a dream that was failing to manage what was truly the key ingredient and the it factor. And when we come down to it, it all comes back to energy. It all comes back to how do we manage it. And when we're able to now bring a tangible number, which is HRV, it completely changes everything. If we take a look here at this graph, high energy at the very top, being that HRV number, low energy being at the bottom. We have our catabolic conflict energy on the left and our anabolic empowering energy on the right. What we end up finding is that any stimulus we have, we're in the overreaching space. And stress is good. Stress is what makes us grow. Stress is what empowers us. Stress is what allows us to become more resilient. But however much time we spend up here in that overreaching space, we need to reciprocate it with regeneration. And as we come into this rhythm back and forth and back and forth, we start to see this parabola effect and we start to enter into ownership. And that ownership energy is that high level of energy, that confident energy, that empowering energy that positive energy, that leadership energy, that contagious energy, that it factor. And it's measured through HRV. And as we start to spend more time in this overreaching space, our HRV is going to tell us because we're going to continue to see a downward trend. And as we see that downward trend, we will know when we need to enter into that regeneration space. And if we can get into that rhythm and truly find it and gear it on one metric only, we are now going to spend 80% of our time in ownership energy. And as you're going to start to see through these case studies that I present, that you, don't, you are not alone, that the impact of this is real. When we can trace it down to one metric, one metric of HRV which comes into our energy that will allow us to change our life, that is what truly becomes miraculous. This right here is a six-month look at one of our clients. He has a $300 million company. Down here, back in October, he had just come 
He'd just been in the hospital, basically on his deathbed. His company was close to bankruptcy. He was really struggling with how to empower everything together. He was trying to save 5,000 jobs. And ultimately, he spent all of his time in the overreaching space. He gave everything of him. He continued to push, continued to strive, continued to try to do more and more and more. And it ultimately almost cost him his life, and it led to him truly feel, feeling like he was not able to lead. It led him to burnout. It led him to a space of not even being able to operate in his business. When he started to measure HRV, we started to get him active again, started to get him moving again, started to focus on this regeneration quadrant that we spoke about, spending more time there, managing how much time he spent there, and managing his energy, we now see this upward trend of HRV. He got his mojo back. He started leading again. His business turned around. He saved 5,000 jobs. They completely transformed that business in the span of one year. When we look at client two, over the course of three months, this individual has a $3 billion company. They're in the midst of a sale. For the last year, they've been trying to sale it, sell it. For the last year, they've spent time in this upper left quadrant. Constant stress, constant, constant overreaching, constant stimulus, not focusing on himself, not giving him the capability to bounce back and forth so that he was performing at that ownership level, but literally killing himself for the pursuit of the dream. Killing himself for pursuit of what he was truly trying to accomplish. But again, the moment that we allowed him and made him aware of what HRV meant, what heart rate variability was all about, and how it had a direct correlation to energy, and how energy allowed him to perform in that ownership level. It not only started to impact him, but it impacted his leadership team. It impacted the other executives underneath him, his managing directors, and ultimately, created the sell of his company at a greater level than he could have before. And lastly, we come down to this third client. This third client that sold his company for well over $3 billion. He has not a care in the world financially, but he continued to give, he continued to serve, he continued to give more of himself to others. He continued to look for that purpose of what truly was driving him and left him in that upper left quadrant again, not focusing on himself because he didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve to be there. He didn't deserve to focus on himself. And ultimately, it drove him to diabetes. It drove him to driving a car down the highway and not being able to see. The pursuit of a dream almost cost him his life. And so it comes back to managing that one number. That one number that not only changes your energy, but can change your life. Tim Ferriss, the host of the Tim Ferriss Show, often talks about talking with all these CEOs, celebrities, billionaires, uh, extremely successful piece people. And he ended up writing a book, Tool of Titans. And in that book, he says, one of the biggest commonalities between the most successful people he has ever interviewed was that they learned how to create energy rhythm. They learned how to go back and forth between overreaching and regeneration. And it allowed them to get into that ownership space and truly show up with that it factor show up with the energy to maximize their potential and truly pull out every single thing that they could so that they could live their dream, not just here, but sustainably long-term. Your energy has a number, and that number is HRV. And the moment that we measure it, that is the moment that we can manage it and that is the moment that we can change your life. Boom. Was that good? <laughs>